Okay, my first impression of this royal wedding was wow. I mean, from her tiara that set perfectly on the crown of her head to her beautiful chignon, from the drop earrings, not chandeliers, note to American brides, to the neckline. It wasn't quite V, it was more of a portrait off to the shoulders. And I look at him in that beautiful uniform, all standing straight. It just reeked of royalty. And my first impression was, wow, well done. I can see where brides-to-be think that Sophia's dress was a lot like Kate Middleton's, but let's take a closer look. Kate's dress was high at the back of the neck with a plunging neckline into a sweetheart, very fitted, natural waist, flowing. Kate's dress also had a beautiful embroidery of lace coming up into a peak on the front panel. Now let's look at Sophia's dress. While it looked like it was V-neck, it wasn't. It was more off the shoulder into a soft V, it was empired waist, which means it stops right below the upper rib cage. And then it slid down into a soft A line, again, a full skirt, very much like Kate's, without any trim. And then there's the veil. Kate had a very short veil. And I think actually the first time a royal got married in the Abbey and had a short veil. Where our other bride had a full cathedral lace veil. One had her hair up, Sophia, and the other bride had her hair down. Kate had a halo crown. It was very small, a gift from the queen. And then Sophia had a crown that was stood up and had emeralds on the top of it and was placed at a different spot of the head. So really, if you want to, put the photos side by side and you too will start seeing the difference. You know, when it comes to grooms and grooming, you know, Personally, I love a clean shaved man. I mean, you've got a lot going on. He had his, you know, his um, uniform on, which is so striking. I mean, there he stood and he has his, you know, badges, he has his sash. I mean, he looked impeccable, except for maybe that unshaven look. I personally think that he would have looked a little better had he at least trimmed or shaved. That's my own opinion. I think it's the first time we've seen a royal groom outside of probably the Victorian era with facial hair. And that hair was usually a mustache or a very close uh, beard. It must be impossible to figure out what to wear to a royal wedding unless you're a princess or a prince. You saw all the royal members had their tiaras on, they had their sashes on, they had their royal warrants on, they were dressed to the nines. Note to self, most royal weddings are at 11 o'clock. Did you know 11 o'clock was considered the most formal time to get married? Grace Kelly, Jackie Kendi, 11 o'clock was the most formal. Men at that point wore the uh, cutaway, the pinstripe with the ascot. You cannot get any more formal than 11 o'clock. So throw out whatever notion you had about formal dressing being after six, us Americans, and look to the royals. If you're invited to a royal wedding, you're a princess or a pauper, get out that long dress and let's go. I think one of the most striking things about this wedding was how Sophia gazed into her new prince's eyes. I mean, and they held hands and coming down the staircase holding, they looked so happy and so in love. And if that didn't set the tone for the day, I don't know what will. I mean, you just see it. I mean, yeah, pretty good match made in heaven, I think. For more about weddings, tune in to TLC.com and find out what we're doing to bring to you the best weddings out there.